Has it sunk in with any of you yet? It's honestly kind of crazy that we're finally here. Activision Blizzard King have been acquired by Microsoft Xbox. It's one of those stories in gaming that have always just kind of been there these last, well, bit of time. And we've talked about it, we've debated it, but now that it's finally here, it's kind of surreal in a weird way. Arguably, gaming's biggest acquisition just went down in the gaming industry and the whole landscape of everything. Could be irrevocably changed in like a blink of an eye. All of a sudden, Call of Duty and Halo are now owned by the same people. Remember the late 2000s, the wars that raged between Halo and Call of Duty? And then Battlefield was like the little brother there that was always like, I exist, and no one cared. That's a joke. That's a joke. And as I sit back, as the twilight of the day starts to roll in, I have a nice big glass of coffee in my left hand. <sighs> Let's talk about this, because this brings about a whole host of changes to everything, pretty much. And now for a little bit of context, I grew up on Blizzard games. Arguably the only eSport I ever get about was StarCraft 2. Who was there back in the day, watching Total Biscuit do all those shoutcast tournaments? People raising the dongers. Zerg, Terran, Protoss going at each other, those big BlizzCon tournaments all on the line. There was some kind of intrinsic magic to StarCraft esports back in the day. And I think I never really got it out of any other esport that I tried to invest even a little bit of time in. That's not to say they're bad or anything, it's just different strokes for different blokes, you know? When it comes to World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, those are the franchises I grew up with. Right alongside Spyro and Halo and RuneScape. I played Call of Duty since before Call of Duty 4. Didn't play them that much until Call of Duty 4, but I did play the games. And then with Call of Duty 4, I got my dad into gaming. Well, I got him into gaming with RuneScape, I really hooked him in with Call of Duty 4. And he played every Call of Duty since. Hell, he's been kind of talking to me about making even more Call of Duty videos. But now to think that Call of Duty is now owned by the same people that own Halo. It's kind of wild, huh? Kind of wild. What does that say for the future? I couldn't tell you. Halo's not exactly in the best of places right now, but it's trending in the right direction. <clears throat> Sorry, frog stuck in my throat. <clears throat> I definitely think Halo is trending in the right direction. The last season, this last Tenderai event in the upcoming season 5 seem to be market improvements upon the game. And if they are a sign of things to come, I think that can be good tidings for not just Halo, but also Call of Duty and other Microsoft titles in the future. But I mean, Activision Blizzard King, they have a lot of titles in their backlog. They have a lot, a lot. Like seriously, a shocking amount. And I, I've seen one take kind of creep into the forelight or spotlight here. And that is the idea that maybe some of these old series that have been kind of forgotten can be brought back and given some new love and appreciation. And if that was to be the case, I would love to see a revisit to Spyro the Dragon. I remember back in the day, Spyro 1 was my first game I ever played. It's the game that got me into gaming. That's a story for another time, but I remember being so disappointed when Skylanders came out because I just viewed that the series that got me into gaming, that little purple dragon being used to sell cheap plastic toys, a fragment of the genius that came before. I never played Skylanders, I still haven't. One of those little petty things in life, you know? Well, you know you're being petty. You absolutely know you are, but you stick to your guns regardless. And World of Warcraft, what can be said about World of Warcraft? I played that game for nine, arguably ten years of my life. I grew up with WoW. I grew up with Azeroth. Watching Total Biscuit and Jesse Cox videos back in the day, Preach Gaming videos, Bellula, Noble, Asmongold, God. Oh, the days, oh, the days. And I fell out of love with World of Warcraft, and this is one of the funny things, because when it comes to like a lot of like video game acquisitions, I'm going to start moving away from being sentimental, I promise. When it comes to a lot of video game acquisitions, most of the time when it's these big companies acquiring other big companies, I'm going to, like, A on the side of caution, because, you know, conglomerates getting even bigger and all that reduces competition on the whole, which invariably is bad for the consumer. But the funny thing is, I've grown so out of love with... Blizzard's direction for a few years at this point. Like, it just seemed like everything they tried, they failed at. It honestly felt like that. And I debated people back in the day. Some people said it was an execution problem with Blizzard. I always said it was not just an execution problem. That was part of it, but it was always, mostly in my opinion, an idea problem. The fact that he came up with these ideas to begin with, like covenants for World of Warcraft, that's not an execution problem. The way they were designed to be, to function, from inception, at BlizzCon, five minutes after they were announced, people already had all the complaints that turned out their ring true. If you play the game, you would have known that in the development studio. And it's one of those funny things where it's like, yeah, 
I think Xbox has been messing up when it comes to games releases lately. Hell, I am a Halo player. I love Halo. Halo Infinite was a massive letdown in terms of launch content. It's trending in the right direction. It is. It is. You can't say it isn't. It is. And absolutely should have launched in a better state. Hand to God, 100% it should have. But it didn't. And now they're trying to fix it. And when it comes to Blizzard, because I love their IP, I love those games. I've kind of resided myself to just saying, well, the glory days are gone, I'll just move on to greener pastures. There's a chance here that big shakeups could happen, and that, hell, we've already seen Chris Metzen come back on board, who is like one of the OG guys for Warcraft. And there's like a general rule of thumb where if you see some badass art for World of Warcraft or Warcraft 2, probably Chris Metzen. General rule of thumb, right? And maybe it's a cope take. Maybe it is. Maybe it's unrealistic and not going to happen. Probably won't. But God, if there isn't that kernel of hope that maybe, maybe, that some kind of shakeup is all that Blizzard needs to get back on track. Because World of Warcraft is like right there. It doesn't need all that much to be great again. Same thing with StarCraft. StarCraft just needs some actual development. Diablo just needs a loving touch here and there. Heroes of the Storm needs a coffin. Overwatch, a good game. However, it's not that far away. Blizzard's like right there. All they need is the appearance that when these games launch, that the developers even played them. Because when the issues are so apparent to the consumer, immediately, on conception, not even when you have to play the game, you can spot most of these issues when they're announcing them. All Blizzard needs is a shakeup, just enough to where when they announce a certain feature, you can be like, oh yeah, they definitely played this. This sounds cool, with no strings attached. Because that's one of the reasons I stopped playing World of Warcraft, and I kind of moved away from Blizzard as a whole. Because every time they said something that even could be considered good, I would always have to go, but, or, what's the catch? And there would al always be a follow-up to that but. There would always be a catch. Always. Beyond failure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, there was always a but. I would love to go back to WoW. I really would. Retail would need fundamental overhauls, though. But classic? Like, you do a classic plus, and you put some heart and soul into that? I'm game. I'm game. I'm absolutely game. Hell, I'll go back, level a character, try and find a group to play with. I'm down for that. And if you can somehow get World of Warcraft on Game Pass, I mean, then we're talking. Then we're absolutely talking. There's already an argument to be made that I think is pretty ironclad that Game Pass is arguably the best deal in gaming right now if you play a lot of games. If you are a variety gamer, I don't see a better deal than Game Pass. The only counter-argument is that you want to specifically own your games, which is, you know, fair. But if you just want to play a game and you don't care about playing it again in the future, and you just want a quick, easy way to play a lot of games, Game Pass is really damn good, people. It's a really damn good value proposition to you. You get Call of Duty there, you get Diablo, you get StarCraft. Overwatch's PvE mode, <laughs> World of Warcraft, Warcraft 3. Revisit Warcraft 3 Reforged, why not? Throw it on Game Pass. Give it some love, give it some updates. Like, there's so much that can be done here. There really is. And we return to the whole Monopoly argument. Do I like the fact that Xbox and Microsoft acquired Activision Blizzard King? No. I view it as a reduction in competition in the game's market. Do I understand why Xbox did it? Absolutely. And you gotta be high or something to... If you think that you don't know why they did. Microsoft has stupid amounts of money. They have way more money than Nintendo and PlayStation and Sony. They have way, 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 way more. And they can leverage that because they realize, hey, we can just buy out the competition. It's a smart decision. You want to know why? Because it's going to work. Can you see a reality where it doesn't? Because right now, yes, I would argue that PlayStation at least has the better exclusives. That's only because PlayStation is producing high-quality games. If Xbox can get their crap together and put out quality games of the IPs they have, it won't be a fair competition. That's been Xbox's major issue this last console generation. It's the games they put out vary in terms of quant quality. Right now, with the amount of IP they have, if they can start churning out quality game after one another that are polished, that are finished, that release on both console and PC, are also available on Game Pass, that's going to be a damn strong argument to turn the tide of things. And that's what Microsoft and Xbox are trying to go for. It's simple logic. You want to know why they're going to go for it? Because it works. That's the system, people. Microsoft and Xbox didn't make the rules of the game. They just know how to play it. They've been making moves for a while now, and it's almost time to cash in the chips. 
Redfall was a disappointment, but Halo Infinite's starting to make a little bit of a comeback, isn't it? From here on out, though, they need to put out banger after banger. Fable needs to be a banger. Future Halo Infinite seasons need to be a banger. BlizzCon coming up, now with the Activision Blizzard merger, needs to be a banger. Generate hype. Generate good titles. I may not be into racing games or Forza games, but from what I hear, the new Forza game's pretty good. Starfield was a step in the right direction. Bit polarizing, but not everyone's gonna like a Bethesda style of RPG in the year 2023. It's just the way things are. But a lot of people love Starfield. A lot of people did. And it at least didn't have the issues that were systemic, like Red Redfield, Redfall, Redfield. What the hell was that game even called? You know a game's not memorable when you can't even remember the name of it. Hold on, let me look this up. Redfall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, I think it goes to show just how out of their luck and down and out Blizzard fans have been, where we're looking to Microsoft and being, please save us. Right after Halo Infinite and Redfall, like we're looking at that and going, that's our salvation. It's kind of funny. Hey, I want Microsoft to put out good games. They have damn good IP. I want to see them put out quality games. They have a damn good service as well with Game Pass. I want to see that flourish, because it's a good value proposition to the consumer. I also like the fact that Microsoft puts both their games on the console and on PC. Only time will tell where this all goes from here. I don't think Microsoft is done with acquisitions. I don't think they'll do an acquisition as big as Activision Blizzard King again. And maybe they take a brief pause in acquisitions, but I wouldn't be surprised if they go into like a flurry of these like smaller acquisitions. I wouldn't be surprised. It'll be interesting to see. Like I'm a little bit worried about Microsoft becoming a monopoly down the line, but at the same time, for the love of God, can someone please fix World of Warcraft? I'm not asking for much. Can someone do anything with Starcraft? Please, I'm not asking for much here. I imagine Call of Duty won't change all that much. I imagine future titles will be brought to Game Pass as well. I imagine the demo or open beta first coming on a PlayStation will be a thing of the freaking past. But I don't see Call of Duty gameplay-wise or like direction-wise changing all that much. Because, you know, Call of Duty is Call of Duty. It brings in money. It's a proven formula. It's a proven success. When you have something that you know works, don't try and fix something that's not broke. They could argue Call of Duty is broken, depending upon your perspective. Modern Warfare 3. But even then, I kind of like Modern Warfare 3. It's at least fun. But yeah, that's a topic for another video. And with that, I think I'll call the video there for the day. T the tomorrow is full of question marks. Yesterday's a thing of the past. And today, well, Activision Blizzard King have been acquired by Microsoft. It finally happened. After all the court cases and all that happened, it's finally come to pass. Wild to actually see it happen, huh? Also, I will never get over the idea that now Microsoft and Xbox own Spyro. I always associate that little purple dragon with PlayStation, and like, oh my god. But hey, maybe they'll actually do something with Spyro the dragon. One can only hope, right? Alright, everybody, I'm gonna call the video there for the day. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for having in the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel and helps support future content, and I greatly appreciate it. And leave a comment down below with what Activision Blizzard King title you want to see brought back. Or get some good love. World of Warcraft, Spyro, Crash, whatever. Let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts and hear your opinions. And your overall thoughts on the acquisition. Are you optimistic about it? Are you pessimistic? How are you feeling about it? I'd love to hear your thoughts, hear your perspectives, and hear your opinions. Stay safe. Have a great day. Go play some video games if you can. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again.